Welcome back to New to Medical Device Sales. I am your host, Jacob McLaughlin, and today I have such an incredible guest that you guys are only going to get value that you've been looking for everywhere. So before we jump into it, I hope you guys have your notebooks. I hope you guys are ready to learn because the dude we have on today is the person that you're trying to reach out to to get hired, and he's going to give you the secrets. He's going to tell you what he looks for. So going into it, we have Jamil Pendleton on today, who is the Director of Strategy and Talent for Medtronic, the largest medical device sales company in the world, everybody. So, Jay, or Jamil, sorry. Uh, nice thanks, <laughs> thanks for My friends call on me here. Jay, Jacob, you're a friend. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Thanks for jumping on here today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. I've uh, been watching. If you guys don't, if you're looking for great content, you need to be checking out Jay's content on LinkedIn. He's putting awesome videos out there. And he's also, you're on all the social media platforms, right? Uh, yes, I try. I uh, have uh, an Instagram, TikTok, uh, still still trying to figure that one out. But uh, yeah, absolutely. LinkedIn is probably the, the the number one place in terms of, of this uh, for medical device and, yep. and some of the some of the things that I've that I've learned and some of the thoughts that I have absolutely LinkedIn. I love it. I love it. And you guys, the reason I'm saying this is such a big podcast today for you is, you know, you guys reach out to me and, and I can share my experience of how I broke in and what I did. But Jay is the dude who hires for that. Jamil is the guy who is the director of, hey, should we hire this person? What do we look for? And he's going to give you the answer. So that's why today is so big is you guys reach out to me and say, who should I talk to? Jamil is the guy that would be telling you guys who to reach for or what to do. So and I'm sorry, my dog is wanting to go outside. So he is making a bunch of noise right now. Nice. But um, going into it, Jay, number yeah. one, how long have you been in medical device sales for these people uh, listening? There's my dog. Here's your dog. <laughs> 13 years. 13 years. That's amazing. And how many companies have you worked with in those 13 years? Two companies. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah. so you've had some experience with the the soul heart ones and and stayed with them how long have you been with medtronic so i've been back with medtronic for four years i started my career here in 2008 and i spent two years as an associate sales rep and uh ultimately my opportunity to 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 grow came at, at nuvasive yep. uh a minimally invasive company out of uh out of san diego so I spent seven years there and then now i've been back here for four so uh, i don't know if my math adds up but yeah somewhere around 13 i and, love it uh, yeah, it, it, it's been interesting, you know, so just work for the two companies, um, even though I've had three different runs, but three different areas and, ex, you know, kind of different roles. So, so associate sales rep, sales rep, and then now sales leadership and doing some different stuff with, with, with the strategy and talent piece today. I love it. I love it. And, and we're going to dive deeper into that. But uh, really, can you kind of tell us what made you choose medical device sales? Yeah, so I just come back from a gap year which uh, not a lot of Americans go on those or even know what they are, but I had spent four years out of school working at IBM and I loved sales, but I wasn't a hundred percent sure if that's what I wanted to do, you know, for my, for my, for my career. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So what better time when you're kind of 25, you got a little bit of cash in the bank to go figure that out. And I think, you know, just, I, I had to go see some things before I could really understand who I was and what I like to do. So I did that trip. I came back, honestly, with the intention to just earn a little bit of money and go back out on the road to, to, to hit the other countries and continents that, that were on the list. And then I met my wife, <laughs> girlfriend. And, you know, I, I, I've said this before, but it's just such a great movie. She made me want to be another man, a better man. I love that. And uh, so, so I kind of just was like, all right, I, I got to figure my life out. So I was racking my brain, trying to figure out what I was going to do. Looked at real estate, looked at different things. And, you know, my girlfriend at the time, she's like, hey, why don't you talk to my cousin? And she, he, he works with surgeons. He, he, he wears scrubs. Like, what? 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 I didn't even know this thing existed, this whole world of medical sales. And so that's kind of how it started. So I don't know if I found it or if it found me, but I had a great mentor and uh, he, he showed me a little or told me a little bit of the ropes and kind of just explained and diced up the different, I mean, there's so many different divisions, you know, you and I work at yep. different divisions of, of this, of, uh, of medical sales. Yep. And so there's a lot of different call points. You can call the hospitals, you can call the surgeons, you can call the 
supply chain. Um, you know, so there's just so many different things. And so he gave me that crash course. But then, you know, really, I just dove into research. You know, this was 2007 at the time. So, you know, I was just hungry to learn and, and kind of figure out like what this whole thing was about. Yeah. And, you know, ultimately, I landed on the spine and biologic space, now spine and robotics industry where I, where I, where I still am today. I love it. That's awesome, man. And, and I love the part about you saying traveling. Um, I did the same. And I think nice. that's, that's something I would say to everybody out there that is trying to break into uh, medical device sales is you need to be comfortable with who you are. You need to find who you are because I'm promising you this industry will test you. And if you don't know who you are, it could be a, it could be a long road. So I love that you said that, that you, that you went on that and, and that you found your wife to want to make you better. Um, but yeah, so now that you've been in, you, you're, you've worked your way up. Now you're looking for the talent. You're looking for the people who can make a difference and, and impact an organization. Can you kind of tell us what you look for in candidates when they're reaching out to you or when they're, you're trying to get interviews and trying to fill a position? Yeah, professionalism, tenacity, determination, hunger, grit, humble. You know, so be hum, be humility, right? Be humble, right? Uh, I mean, I, I look for A players, right? For people that that could help advance our business and grow share. I look for people that could replace me. That's what I'm looking for. The the the, the best of the best, right? And so it doesn't really have a look, feel, size, shape to it, it but i know it when i see it and i feel that i'm a very good evaluator of talent just based on you know doing this for as long as i have i've been you know hiring competitive reps and that's what i do so just to level set your audience i'm not the guy for them to reach out <laughs> to about jobs just because i'm hiring experienced reps in the industry specifically spine and okay. robotics but what i look for in them is the same is the same character yeah. traits it's just people that can help us grow share and and ultimately transform spine surgery yep oh i love that i love that yeah and, and like you said even though you're with like spine and you're trying to get competitive when trying to break in you know you're yeah there's there's something that sets you sets you apart from other players and and when people are going to take chances on you especially if you don't like myself i always say when i didn't have the sales experience and people would tell me hey you don't have sales experience but we're willing to take a shot on you um mm -hmm. being able to go above and beyond with that now I want to backtrack just a little bit because since you have had success, you were a rep for a while and you had a good success in it. Can yep. you tell us what you did and what you felt like you made you such a successful rep in medical device sales? Oh man, that's a, that's probably longer than you've got <laughs> or that I've got today, but I would say it, it starts with just listening and being a sponge with everything around you. So be, be a sponge in your environment. Right. Be a sponge with the surgeons around you if you're working with with, with surgeons and um, senior sales reps. Right. Uh, realize that you're in a unique and lucky place. You know, to get to do this is 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 a blessing. And you know, when I started out, it was was green, was on the ground floor, was wearing my scrub hat over my ears. Like, I didn't know what what I was doing. And uh, I just watched and observed the people that were successful. And so I think I think starting out that's how you got to play this just be a sponge and just observe people and i actually i'm still doing that today uh because i haven't arrived whatsoever i'm still very much learning every single day not only who i am but how to build how to grow with talent how to build the brand right and that's where in digital solutions you're know, basically transforming us into the next phase of mm -hmm. surgery because surgery tomorrow jacob is going to be a lot different than it is today yeah i think everybody gets that just with the rate of technology and the growth and kind of where we are today i mean just look at any industry right cars yeah. whatever I, I the every industry is has, has had its peak of innovation and i think that our specific industry is at the precipice or it's an inflection point if you yep. will of, of of a boom and of an explosion so i'm uh trying to remember what you said oh what, what what made me successful yeah yeah so 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 be humble again the same character traits that i look for is 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 the same i would say things that i had to do and still have to do today to so be extremely humble and be grateful for the opportunity and ask questions, you know, um, it's okay if you mess up, right? It's how you respond, right? It's how you handle yourself. And so, you know, just understanding that, that, that every day is a gift and that you have, you wake up every single morning with an opportunity to improve yourself and the lives of those around you. 
So that's kind of how I live my life in general, like yep. not just at work, but, but as a dad, as a husband, um, you know, and so that's, that's would be the same advice that I would give because it's the same principle uh, core kind of to me. And so that's the same advice that I would give to anyone. I love that. And, and the reason I love that so much is it's, so many successful reps that I say or talk to and I ask what the secret is, it's exactly what you just said. It's, it's your, you're wanting to make an impact. You're wanting to have positive impact on others' lives outside of work, just, just who you are. That's who you are as a human being. So going above and beyond and knowing that your, your product is going to make a difference in someone else's life is what drives mm -hmm. you. And, and then also just, again, always being a student of the game, student of the industry, you can't ever stop learning because it's, it never stops growing and, and keeps on transforming. Like you're saying, like I've yes. talked to people with some of the technologies with you probably even in your space mm -hmm. it's like we're in the future already and what they're working on yes and and i'll say two more things just to expand on that these things I, I, passion is important to me right mm -hmm. and, and i lead with it empathy is the other one yep. so if there were two words uh, that, that i would say describe me as a leader i'm an empathetic leader i'm a passionate leader and so but empathy you can't have empathy for something if you don't understand it, if you haven't lived it, right? So I started at the very bottom and grew up to where I am today, which is still not where I ultimately want to be. Yep. And so I'm growing and I'm learning and I'm sharpening the saw and I'm reading and I'm, I'm observing and I'm, I'm taking notes and I, I rip through moleskins all day long. I've got a journal of these. Even in my OR days, every single surgery was a new page writing down not just the sizes and, and, and the diameters of the things that the surgeons were using, but like what I've learned about, it. hey, he doesn't like this, or yep. she wants to decompress before she puts her screws in, right? Be a student of the game, like Jacob said, that's what you got to do. And so the only way to advance your career is to do that. And, you know, as I continue down this road and in, 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 in sales leadership, and, you know, ultimately, who knows, like where the, where the destination is, uh, I, it's the same principles that, that, that got me here today that are going to get me there tomorrow. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And something you just said is uh, just, again, being that student, I think you can uh, appreciate this. I'm, I'm reading right now the winning book by uh, Tim Grover, who was Michael Jordan and yeah. Kobe Bryant. And he said a, a line to me the other day that just, or in his book that I think just hit me the most. And it says in, in life, a lot of times how school teaches us is to learn and then take the test. But in life, you take the test and then you got to learn. And, and, that, and I think when I, I heard that for the first time, I thought about medical device sales because it's kind of like you're thrown to the wolves. A lot of times mm -hmm. it's like, you're going and you got to figure it out. And if you're going to be successful, you got to be a learner and it just keeps going. It never, it's not like it ever stops to, to the day you're getting mastered because then That's something right. else comes out. There's a new competitive product. Like it's always just keeps going. Yeah, it's a good point. And, and I love that you said, he said to you, because that's what reading does. They speak to you, even though it was a, uh, you know, Freudian slip, maybe like <laughs> that speaks to you, Jacob. Like, that's yep. why I love reading because it, it, I always gain something. I'm always taking notes, right? Whether it's the Bible or a, a great book, like yep. I'm a student of that subject and, I, and I'm trying to apply it to today and to do different things. And so, yeah, absolutely. The test comes first. Medical sales, it has this, I don't know, great allure and this sexy name, but it is an absolute grind and if yes. you if you don't know that going in know that now like this is not there are no participation participation trophies in yeah. this world <laughs> and you may it may be you may fail seven times and then on the eighth try you you, you get it right you just have to have resolve in and i guess this would go back to your other question about what it takes you just got to keep getting up and find ways to to propel you through those roadblocks yeah. right a lot of it's mental 100 percent. And, and thank you for saying that because i've said it on here but again it's it's good to hear from somebody who's been in the game <laughs> rather than just a year right it, it is a grind yeah, it, yeah. and it's gonna beat you up and you just gotta keep getting up uh so that is i'm, I'm glad you said that because everybody who reaches out to me they think it's big paychecks working with doctors it's sexy yeah. it's like this and it really that's a very small glimpse of what it really is and and People just don't see that and they don't believe well, it when you tell them. And, and, and also just, just, just like in, just like in football, right? I mean, there are your quarterbacks that make gobs of money and then yep. there's everybody else. I mean, so not everyone crushes it 100%. in medical sales, like just to level set people. Like it's, it can be lucrative. It can be good. But if you go in thinking you're going to just 
make a tons of money. And that's just, that's the wrong mentality. Yep. hundred percent. Right? So you just kind of have to know that like you can do well if you do this the right way. And if you listen to guys like Jacob and, and, and anyone that, that is, uh, trying to, to, um, just share wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. And I appreciate it. And, and sharing and listening to guys like Jay, who has experience and who has done it time and time again. Um, and Jay, just, just going into this last one, like these people yeah. who are listening, our listeners right now, what would you say to them? If they're they're these people are trying to break in, some of them are coming from medical sales college. Some of them used to work a sales job. Some of them are just coming out of college. What yeah. do you say to separate yourself, to make yourself stand out, to start getting these interviews? And once you get the interviews, what's going to get you the job? Like, what would you, be, what'd your advice be to them? Yeah. Be, be yourself. It sounds very simple, but it's the only way to play it. So your resume, your accolades, whether it be school or where you are today in your sales job or whatever job you are, that's just prerequisite to potentially landing an interview. Okay. If you land an interview, that's your opportunity to differentiate yourself and to be special. And so I just had this conversation the other day. Uh, and what I was telling her is you need to focus on what you love to do and what you're passionate about doing and what's unique to you. Okay. And so for me, it was world travel. And so when I got back and when I ultimately found this world and then was going for it all in, I would don't be, don't be at all shy about the fact that I took a year off for traveling. I highlighted that. Like yeah. that was, that was my differentiator. That was something that people remembered me by. Right. And then that way, when you're one of a ton of resumes on a stack, that you'll stand out. Yeah. So that's what I would say, like, find something that is only that is uniquely you, number one. And number two, and this is what started my first video with snow in the background on LinkedIn. If you're trying to break into medical sales, you need to do what I just said, be yourself, be unique, but do the research, do your homework. Understand the company of the people that you're reaching out to. You need to know that. There are annual reports. There are investor stuff you can find. There's so much information online for publicly traded companies, but also for private companies. You've got to do the homework, right? You have to have a working knowledge of that company and do everything you can to get to that place before you reach out. You know? Yeah, 100%. We're bit, I'm a busy guy. Right. I got a family. I got, I got, you know, we got a lot of things we got, we're trying to do in a very shortened period of time. It's 24 hours in a day for us to take time out of that busy day to talk to you. It needs to be, you need to know how to play the game. It's like trying to, to sit at a high stakes poker game, but you don't even know how to hold the cards. You don't even know how to play the game. Everyone at that table, it's not their responsibility to teach you Texas Hold'em. You need to practice before yeah. Right. So, so practice your pitch, understand who you are, understand how to play the game before you get to that table, before you even try to get a seat at that table. Right. You need to do just the homework. I love that, man. I love, thank you for saying that because this is the thing with a lot of people who, you know, it, I know it. That's why you right. said it is people reach out and they're just, they want their hand held or they want, they, they come up and they're like, a lot of times they'll be like, Oh, who do you work for? You take, it takes three seconds to check out my LinkedIn. You know, like that was the thing I will say when, and I've said it on this podcast before, that's why I got interviews. That's why people remembered me because it took 30 seconds for me to go to a LinkedIn, find out where they went to college or find out a personal thing about them. I could Facebook them. I could do something to find something about them. Know the company, an easy Google search will tell you the top medical device companies. And you can, like you said, find reports about them. And now you have a conversation to talk about. And, and the reason the reason why that's a key important thing is because what do you think that people like me are looking for? We're looking for how these people are going to actually do the job yep. if they get the job. So if you ever watch the movie Joe versus the volcano, it's it probably predates you, Jacob, but it's one of my and <laughs> my sister and I's favorite movies. There's this great scene of the guy with the fluorescent lights. He's like, I know he can get the job, but can he do the job? Yeah. You know, it, it, which is so true. And, and I'm probably going to have to riff on a video about that exact quote, because look, we need to know that you can do the job. That's the most important piece. And so how you interview and how you handle yourself during that courting process is ultimately you're showing the people, the hiring managers, that how you're going to do the job if you get that job. So 
why would you not, why would you go in half-assed? Why yep. would you go in without the research? Just like I don't go to a surgeon before I've absolutely memorized their CV. Yep. That's a, that's, a, that's an insult to them. Yep. Don't do the same to us. Yep. And dude, I'm so Jay, I shouldn't say dude. Jay, <laughs> thanks so much for saying that because that's actually what this whole podcast has been about. Do the job to get the job, right? It's why I made right. an Excel sheet with 180 people and I kept track of every single person. It's why I reached out to Good people. It's why I made the 30 day plan. You know, like we talk about this and my listeners have heard it, but it, I say it all over and over, right? The, the thing they could always say to me is, hey, you don't have sales experience. And every single time I said, you're right, but I, here I am sitting in front of you, the VP with no sales experience because I found out who influenced you just like when I get in and there's a doctor that doesn't know who I am. They will. That's right. You know, I would, I would say this though, to play devil's advocate, just yep. because let's just go. Why there. not? You do need sales experience. The majority of people, Jacob, are not yep. going to be as driven as you yep. to do those things. Sales experience is what teaches you that. So somewhere along your path, you learn that whether it was training or whatever, Somewhere along the path, you learn what it takes to, to stand out. And so that's what sales experience teaches people. Sure. That's why we ask for it, because we don't have time to get you there, number one. Number two, sales experience is something that sales is an art form. And it's something yep. that you, you can either do or you, or, or, or you can't. And, and yeah, you can learn, you can improve for sure. But it's innate. There are things that are just innate. The soft skills about being able to communicate, being able to carry yourself, being able to be confident uh, when you have a surgeon yelling at you, when you have a patient open on the table and they need an answer and you don't know the answer, how do you handle yourself in that moment, right? When things are going wrong. So being calm in the pocket and understanding that having that situational awareness, that's sales because you've been there and you're not going to let anything. And that's why I say military and athletes, there's a lot of them in medical sales because they can compartmentalize and they can get you know, through that tough time because they've done yep. it. In they other can go through the life. high pressure and they can perform. Yep. And you're hundred yeah. percent right, Jay. And, and I say that just because I was told my whole life or my whole time interviewing, right. Uh, personal training isn't sales, which I have my own opinions on that as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like sale, it is, I love people. I've always been natural with making relationships and reading people. So he is right with that, you guys. And also the thing I've been told with sales too, they want to make sure you're not going to quit the first time you get screamed at by a surgeon, right? Like they, right. when you go through sales and you've had, a, you've got yelled at by a customer, you've had some crappy days. Like they right. want to make sure that you can weather the storm because like you said, it's not sunshine and rainbows all the time. And that's what they're looking for. And they don't have time and money to take a risk when they're, when they're trying to get going and performing right away. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's the, you, you nailed it. Time and money, right? It's, 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 it takes a lot of time to land the right candidates to, to find the right talent for the organization. And then the onboarding time and the, the, the time to get you up to speed on the products and our messaging and how we show up to surgeons, right? That's a, that's a long process. And so we want to make sure that we're right on the higher piece. And that's why I'm, you know, at, at, at my position though, again, like I don't have as much to do with the entry level roles, um, but, but it's still very important. And so that's why I'm on your show today. Cause if I can reach one, maybe to maybe 10 people to try to get them to show up a little bit differently and a little bit better than they were going to show up, then that's worth me being on here. That's wow. worth my time today. I love that, man. And we appreciate you being on there. And on that, we're <laughs> going to end it on that. Can, Jameer, where can they find you? Where, what are your yeah. handles? What can they find you to, to connect? Yeah. So LinkedIn is probably, you know, I would say that uh, a great place for, for all things content. Um, I also have a personal website, Jamil.com. It's just a landing page for, you know, some of the stuff that I've done and the videos that I've put out there. Um, but recently have launched a podcast about my, the industry that I'm in It's called Sultans of Spine, sultansofspine.com. And very excited about that. It's a one-on-one -on -one interview style podcast, just like this. Uh, I bring on surgeons, uh, other, you know, leaders in the industry, not just spine. So it'll, the, the content will be diversified through the guests that are on the show. Mm -hmm. but I'm super excited about it. And yeah, I hope you guys tune in. Sultans of I love it. We appreciate your time. And again, you guys, if you are looking just for a, an amazing resource, like I always say, like Jay's lived it, he's done it and he's had success and he's worked his way up as I'm the guy, again, just telling you what I did to break in. So please use that resource, go to his podcast and, and learn more because again, 
like we say, even if you just take one thing, that one yeah. thing could be the difference of you getting a job or not. So please put yourself out there, go, go check it out. And Jay, again, thank you so much for taking time today. We really appreciate it. And just helping our listeners, uh, again, see what the difference is and what that takes. Jacob, thank you, man. Thanks for doing this, right? You, you, your, your, your platform is important as are people like you in the industry. It's important to get fresh perspectives and passion that you bring. And so I recognize that. I've seen that from you and I'm looking forward to seeing what you do throughout your career. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And everybody who's listening, if you could please press that like and subscribe button, it always helps us grow the channel. If you guys are listening on the podcast, a five-star review will help us out and grow this to even more people and have impact. And again, you guys can always reach out. Uh, TikTok, uh, Instagram, new to medical device sales, LinkedIn, Jacob McLaughlin. And also if you're looking for a little more, we have that ebook at new to medical device sales.com. Uh, the link is in the show notes where again, I just share all my experience of how I broke in and what I did to get four job offers from top 30 medical device sales companies. I really appreciate you guys tuning in and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. See you guys.